No, what we're gonna check out today, what I'm actually looking forward to is the entire new German line. And the huge battle, a huge battle, uh, um, Royal Navy battle cruiser. Right, let's start, let's start it off. We can start it off with the Germans. We can start it off with the Germans. We can actually start with the premium, Schönberg. What is this equipment? What is special about it? 150, 7 second reload. 16.5 at tier 6, that's pretty okay. 8km torp, 65. 11.9 range and speed. 36, yeah, it seems pretty standard. Def chargers, of course. What do you have? Classic damage, you got heal. Tier 6 with heal? Tier 6 with heal? A German tier 6 with heal. What the hell? And it has speed boost, 8%, but it doesn't have... It doesn't have uh, smoke and it doesn't have hydro. What the hell? So it doesn't have smoke and it doesn't have hydro. So... Are they hoping it's gonna be some sort of gunboat? But it only has 36. With speed flag that's 37.8. With speed mod, that's probably going to be like, what, 38.3, I think? No, it's a bit more than that. But still, that's that's not a whole lot. It's going to be like 39 with speed boost and flying. That's not that much, though. That's still not going to be that much. How, how gunboat, open gunboating with that? That's going to struggle. Okay, let's see, is it very small? Hmm. Uh, range was 11.9 It's actually pretty big like look at look at the thickness on this thing. It's pretty damn thick Flat booty really long ship in fact It's got eight torps Four guns. Is it four guns? Yeah, it's four got eight torps four guns No smoke Carl von Schoenberg with that speed and that size, how the hell do you open water gunboat on this thing? Isn't it just Gaere? Looks very similar. It's 8km torps. It's 8km torpedoes. 13.765. Like, the speed is fine, the damage is okay, it's tier 6. It's The torps are actually pretty decent. 7 second reload on guns, that's not too special. Anything about the armor? T6 one torps, yeah. 16mm plating, so nothing special there. Hmm. Interesting. 7 second reload on 4 guns is pretty terrible DPM, to be fair. Like, it's just pretty terrible DPM. Uh, it's 150s though. If it gets decent AP pen, you could technically smash low tier cruisers pretty hard. You could smash low tier cruisers pretty hard, because they don't really have any armor. So if you have anything resembling decent pen, sure. 3.7k citadel damage is quite significant. I mean, that's 7.4 for two citadels. Potentially, you're doing 15k with four sits, which on lower tier cruisers is a shit ton. But I'm not sure about the mobility. It seems pretty questionable. Expecting good pen on German DDs, yeah, it's it's a bit iffy. You you honestly you have no idea what the pen is gonna be like. It can be like ZF6, which has complete junk pen, or it can be something like the Schultz. Uh, suddenly they decided to give it really good pen. I don't know. Seems seems questionable. The consumables indicate open water gunboat, but the gun power and the size and speed that indicates the opposite, so... I don't know, rough one. R rough one to decipher. We'll see, we'll see what they do with it. Von der Tann. The new German line then. 283s, so very much battlecruiser guns. 36.5k, uh, which for tier 3 isn't bad. 14.3k range, not too bad either. 27.5 knots! My god, this thing is gonna be fast among the low tiers. 
That's so fast. Like, everyone else is doing, crawling along at like 20 knots, 21, 22. This thing is doing 27.5. With speed flag, it's going to be really fast. That's actually very fast. And the first damage got 10 second duration, 40 second cooldown, 4 stacks, and standard heal. Good lord, that is a squat looking thing though. Wow, the firing angles... The firing angles are probably going to be really iffy. Getting a full broadside is basically going to mean to give... Or getting all guns off is going to mean to give you a full broadside. So most of the time you're realistically probably only going to be using three turrets. That's a low bridge though. Not a whole lot of superstructure here. And if it's... Look at... I can already see you see this shape here. That's going to be an icebreaker the size of a planet. Yep. But this is all 16. It doesn't have the insane armor of uh, the low tier Soviets where they were just immune to HE. In fact, there's quite a bit of stuff that you can farm with HE on this thing. There's quite a bit of stuff you can farm with HE on this thing. 25 here, upper belt. 200 millimeter. Oh, it's, is it turtle back? 80 millimeter nose. So, very much can push in a. There is a turtle back. 50 millimeter turtle back. And the citadel is also very low in the water, actually. Oh, yeah. So this thing is probably not going to get citadel. And it's going to be quite fast. Fast damage gone. Could be interesting. Could be interesting, for sure. Problem is, of course, these shell-catching secondaries, the casemates. You really don't want these kind of shapes in World of Warships. It just ends up eating a bunch of random pens. Hmm. So 27.5, that's fast. That's very fast for the tier. Very fast for the tier. And we have Moltke. M another real ship. Well, the, ang the angle of the turtle back is the O class. Oh, that's not good. The O class uh, turtle back gets Citadel. That's actually not good. That's a bit of an oof. Still 283s. 28 second reload, 40.8k, actually has some AA, Pog U, 15.4k range, 28.4 speed, damn, these things are fast, these things are fast for low tier, uh, that's 29, 29.8 with speed flag, this thing is doing 30 knots with speed flag at tier 4, that's pretty nutty actually for uh, tier 4. That's cruiser speed at tier 4. I wish they would allow us to grind this line, so you could actually get the experience it load in low tier. But you know Wargaming is going to do their classic monetization bullshit where, oh, buy our, buy our totally not gambling crates for a chance to get the tier 9 ship and skip the entire grind and skip everything and just play our fantasy ships. So... They're gonna they're gonna sell the ships, they're not gonna grind them at all, so. Classic. Are you gonna play at all? You can't play them. Pass damage control. Repair party. Only three heals. That's important to note, by the way. Uh, normally battleships have four heals. These things only have three. So intentionally downgraded the heals. Okay, we're gonna see a huge icebreaker again. Very much. Poor art department. Studying these pictures in details, designing these ships from the ground up, and then Wargaming is like, thank you art department for your great service. Now we're gonna not release these ships for three months and we're gonna put the higher tier ones in loot boxes. Thank you for your work. Feels bad, man. How's the beehole? Can we actually look at the beehole? It doesn't seem to be any change. Didn't seem to change anything out of, outwardly. So icebreaker gigantic. Very thick. Fair bit of armor. 25 center, but... Fair bit of armor, like, across the board. The damage repair is also in numbers. Yeah, they have the Soviet damage gun. They have the fast acting damage gun. So a lot of protection, honestly, a lot of armor on this thing. Not a whole lot of superstructure to farm either. Turret setup, once again, 
bit wonky, so you're probably realistically going to be using four turrets most of the time. Turtle back once again 50 millimeters, but someone said it's the same angle as the O class. For for uh, for those wondering what is the O class, that's like Siegfried and Eger, and as you probably know, those things can be seated out quite comfortably. So um, turtle back probably not as effective as one one might hope. Probably not as effective as one might hope. At this tier, it shouldn't matter much. One, one might hope so, yes. Where did you get this file? I'm sorry, but my source uh, has chosen to remain anonymous. Let's see, 305 millimeter guns, 24 second reload. That's a pretty damn fast reload. But it's only 305s. At tier five, New Yorks and stuff are fl are sailing around with 350 dear 356s. So this are only 305s. That's going to that's going to struggle a fair bit. 47.6k health, already more than Zhao, always good to see. Uh quite close to Congo actually in terms of health. That's not bad at all. 47.6 is bad health and all. Range 16.3 at tier 5. That's not too bad actually. 26, you lose speed. That's interesting. You lose speed. The tier 4 was faster. The tier 4 did 28.4, but now you only do 26.5. Koenig is also 305. That's true. New York has 305. No, it doesn't. New York is 356. Why do people keep... I see that so often. Every time I mention New York being 356, people try to correct me. It baffles me. I wonder why. what has caused that thing to spread. Because it's, this is not the first time I hear people thinking that. Still does. Same first damage con, same repair party. Oh, that's actually. That water line is pretty low. It, it, I get Kremlin vibes looking at this water line. I re, I'm really getting Kremlin vibes looking at this water line. Same kind of shape. This is, of course, a huge weakness that the Kremlin does not have, though. This this kind of shell catcher. Hmm. The torpedo net extenders. For those wondering, what the hell are these things that you see on these low tier ships? These things, you could attach a torpedo net to this, and you could like twist them out like this. So it was a st basically a stick sticking out like this. And then you'd have a torpedo net hanging here, and the idea was that it would arm any torpedoes outside of the hull. So it was a torpedo net. So that's that's what these things are. Let's see, what kind of armor are we dealing with here? Huge icebreaker. Are they gonna get the icebreakers throughout? 100 millimeters. 120, very strong, very high icebreaker, very small vulnerable vulnerable area actually. In fact, looking at this armor profile from the front like this, that's a lot of really thick armor to deal with. There's a bit of superstructure and this thing is going to arm some shells for sure. This is going to be pens, but looking pretty tanky. The shell trap in the middle is a problem for sure, but everything else... Angled away, same shell traps once again. These are going to be some big shell traps, I think. But I think you're going to be bouncing a fair bit of AP here. It's a 50 millimeter turtle back. Dun, dun, dun. Hmm. We'll see how badly these things get citadel. This this angle doesn't look the same. This angle looks. Uh, this angle is different. This is not the O class angle anymore. This you see, diff like the difference in steepness is quite significant. This looks like it's actually working turtle bank. You see that difference? I mean, look look at this angle. This looks much. You look at this angle, 
and then we go back and we look at uh, we look at the um, angle of the tier four. It's pretty clear that yeah, look how steep this completely different angle. This one is so steep. This turtleback doesn't look effective, but the other one looks very effective. I think the tier five is looking to be quite quite tanky in basically everywhere. So tier 5, Der Flinger, seems to be a big icebreaker, overmatchable nose though for sure, and some nasty looking shell traps. Like one of the things that makes Soviet ships that have this armor very tanky is that they have no superstructure to shoot as well, but this thing, this is gonna arm, this is gonna arm a lot of shells and there is a fair bit of superstructure. Hmm. We'll see how it plays out. Oh, is that an unmodeled superstructure? You see that? I wonder if shells go straight through this. It kind of looks like it. Interesting. The turrets look very exposed. Yeah, this is a pre this is barbette that sticks up pretty high actually. Normally the barbette on the front turret doesn't stick up quite this much, but you see how high this thing sticks up from both sides here? I feel like the turrets are gonna get smashed on this thing. It's because of the nose. It's because of it, this is what is it called Atlantic bow, Atl Atlantic bow. Uh, so they have to extend the height of the turret so it can shoot over, and that's going to be quite vulnerable, I think. I think that these turrets are going to get smashed. That remains to be seen, but it seems like a weakness. It's not an Atlantic. No, it doesn't have the curve, but it has the same kind of like heightening. What was the belt thickness? The belt thickness was, I think, 200... 300! 300! Oh shit, 300? That's pretty... That's really strong. 300 with turtle back and 45s internal. That's a lot at tier 5. That's interesting. Let's see, Mackensen. 350s! 350s! Not 3556, five, but 350s. What do you overmatch with 350? Divided by 14.3, you overmatch. You don't overmatch 25, you overmatch. You overmatch 24, but what's the real value there? 21, I guess? 21 is the important value there. So you don't overmatch anything interesting, really. 52.3k health, 16.6k range. 28 knots, 28. So with speed flag, you're doing what? 29.5 about? Hmm. It's Prince Eitel Friedrich guns? Oof. But you get Hydro. Hydro at tier six. 5.5 km Hydro at tier six. That's pretty strong. What, three heals again, but fast acting damage control. Possible to show the historic text? Absolutely. We can go, let's see. German. Mm, Wundertan. The first German battlecruiser entered service 1910. She was designed for using joint operations with Nassau class battleships, but she significantly surpassed them in terms of speed and was almost as durable in terms of her armor protection. Moltke entered service 1911. The Moltke class battlecruisers embodied a further development of the Wundertan class. Compared to her predecessor, she had larger dimensions, a larger number of main battery guns, and more durable armor protection. Der Flinger entered service 1914, the most advanced German battlecruisers that took part in World War I, armed with 305mm main battery guns installed in super-firing turrets. And now we're looking at Mackensen, which entered service 1914. Battle cruisers that were built during World War I. Their main advantage compared to their predecessors was enhanced firepower at the cost of shifting to 350mm main battery guns. Very Prince Eitel Friedrich uh, vibes on the nose, for sure. That's a lot of shot traps. Yeah, that's when I'm looking at it. 
I, I'm looking at ship. Look how many places there are for shells to arm. Like all of this. Okay, icebreaker. Third. Okay, that's enough. A tier six, though, that's plenty. A tier six, that's plenty. 120. 270 millimeter, 300 millimeter armor belt. A lot of shot traps, though. A lot of places to arm the shells. Hmm. Behind this, we have. Oh, no turtle back. Yeah, this is very, very Pia Prince Eitel Friedrich esque. So, very identical here. Citadel is low in the water. Yeah, waterline citadel, but there's no turtle back. There is no turtle back to protect it. It's just armor. So, spaced, but big chance of being smashed. So, the question is this is basically a Prince Eitel Friedrich. Very much similar. The question is which. Which will, will they continue with for the tier 6 or for the tier 7? Because at, at this point, we, we go into Wargaming's fantasy line. So, are we going to have Turtleback or are we going to have something else? Prince Eitel Friedrich. No, not Prince Eitel Friedrich. What was this? This was Prince Heinrich. <laughs> Prince Heinrich, tier 7. And year of design. Now it's no longer year of service. It's a uh, year of design, 1916. An Ersatz York class battle cruiser that was that was a precursor to the high speed battleship concept. She is a direct development of the Mackensen class, and her main battery guns are identical to those of the Bayern class battleship. Well, that answered our question. Then, Turtleback probably gone. 380s? 380s are nice. 380s are nice at tier 7. That's actually a good caliber gun to have. Prince Heinrich, 56.3k health. AA looking quite strong. That just shows the values though, doesn't actually. Normally though, German AA is junk, mostly because the range is so terrible on it. We finally get access to torpedoes. Oh no, but... Oh no, yeah, it's gonna be that 10km torps, isn't it? Super slow with a lot of range. Not exactly what you want for YOLO. Range, 18.6 at tier 7. That's really good. That's really good. Propulsion, 28 knots. Not bad. Hydro, 5.5 Hydro. Heal and fast acting damage con. Let's take a look at our boyo here then. Well, actually, first we're gonna look at where are the, the torpedoes are in the back, but they're pretty protected. Might survive. Really long ship, but whoa, that's a very very long ship. Interesting. It looks like icebreaker, but third, thirty millimeters. Mm. It bounces four oh six. You're tier seven. So what, what is what is your issue? Georgia Musashi will lower match your nose. So if you get up tiered, that's becoming an issue. But 30 is still pretty good. That's still pretty good at tier 7. I'd say it's still pretty good at tier 7. It still offers a fair bit of protection, actually. So it shouldn't, shouldn't be that bad. 270, 300. You're keeping the exact same armor scheme. What was really... 300 at tier 4, tier 5 was very good. But now at tier 7, it's starting to fall off pretty significantly. Because you're facing a lot of hard-hitting ships. Turrets still seem... They're so flat. I'm, I'm worried about this. I'm worried about... You see this? how flat of a surface this is. I feel like this is going to catch a lot of shells. And they're going to smash these turrets pretty hard. Hmm... A lot of shell, shell traps once again with casemates here to catch. Let's let's oof. Why would they abbreviate Prince to PZ? I don't know. Ah, of course, no turtle back. So any hopes of Gneisenau our armor scheme gone? This is just big spaced armor, big spaced armor. Three hundred. 300 followed by 60, 360 millimeters. Hmm. 
Let's see how effective it is. It is Waterline Citadel by the looks of it. It is a Waterline Citadel. That's still gonna potentially get you smashed pretty hard. 30, 60. Hmm. Can you get smashed by AP Boomers? We'll see. So don't give broadside in these things, but in terms of YOLO potential, I would say you have a you have a fair bit of YOLO potential at tier seven. Like this will bounce the majority of the shit shooting you. You're not gonna just get citadel through this nose. You can rush in and you can drop your torps on them. You got three hundred and eighty millimeter guns and you got eight of them. Keep in mind it's eight three hundred and eighty millimeter guns. Gneisen now has six. So technically this thing punches harder than the Gneisen now. And considering it's a battle cruiser, um, it also ha probably has battle cruiser dispersion. So it's not gonna have the armor of the Gneisen now, but it might easily have the the smashing power. Oh, but those are the worst World War One shells? Oh, I didn't consider that, did I? I didn't consider that. They tend to give them really junk shells. A lot of booty protection as well. Interesting. Hmm. This is Bayern guns, not Gneisen now. True, true, true. There's a big difference with that. They even said, they even described that uh, main battery guns are identical to those of the Bayern class. I don't think Bayern class is going to be that bad. Hello, uh, well, not so. Thank you for the 33. I don't think if, if you're at your own tier against tier 7s, I don't think Bayern is actually going to be that much of a problem, especially if you get Battlecruiser Dispersion. The problem is this thing is probably going to up tier quite poorly because the guns, guns are going to fall off pretty fast. It reminds me of, um, I guess, was the Constellation. That had a bunch of gimmicks, but up tiered really poorly. And tier seven really is a matchmaking where you get up tiered a ton. So, hmm, that's gonna be interesting. But Bayern, Bayern, Bayern guns are quite good. I... And then we get Zeten, the abomination. What's the description actually on Zeten? Year of Design, 1944. A fast battleship armed with six 406mm guns. The architecture and arrangement of her guns can be traced back to the to battlecruiser projects that were designed not long before World War I. Year of Design, 44. But everything can be traced back to projects that were designed not long before World War I. What? Okay, interesting. It's... okay. Star Destroyer Z then. 406s, 25 second reel, 30 second turret reverse. That's good. Very fast turret reverse. Um, 62.9k health. S really hard hitting torp. 16.5 on a battleship is actually really hard hitting torpedoes. Uh, the issue is, of course, 50 knots. They are so slow. Good lord, these things are slow. They have 12 km. Like I would happily, for a battleship, I would happily trade that those 12 km torps for 6 km torps that did 70 knots instead. That would be so strong. But this is their wargaming thing. They're giving the the Elbing torpedoes basically to these ships. So that's gonna be hard to use. Can be trolley. I mean, I guess you could get some really weird torpedo hits randomly. But when you really need them in a YOLO, I think they're gonna be pretty questionable. Depends on really the angle. Range 19.1. That's pretty good. Tier 8? That's actually really good. 19.1 range at tier 8. That's very good. Holy shit. Colombo is crying in a corner right now. 31 knots base speed. 31 knots base speed. Uh, God, good lord, that's not bad at all. With speed flag, that's 32 and a half. 32 and a half with speed flag. For tier 8, that's pretty good. Fast acting damage con, three heals again. Keep in mind three heals. It's important to note that you have lost the heal on these ones. And you get 6km Hydro. That is actually a pretty important thing. You get 6km Hydro at this tier. That's gonna be catch quite a lot of people by surprise. So what? Uh so so what what? 
32.5 might not be that fast for the other Germans, but it's fast compared to most other battleships in the game at the tier. Good lord, this thing is ugly. Holy shit, this thing is so ugly. Everything about it looks so out of proportion. We got the Star Destroyer superstructure. We got the oversized turret that looks like it sits on a cruiser hull. It, it, it is... You can tell this is such a wargaming design. This thing is so such an abomination in terms of design. You go from the sleek looking Germans that actually look good to this thing. Like, holy shit. My god. God, it's ugly. Good lord. <laughs> How do you even miss this superstructure when this guy pushes in? Like, holy shit. How do you miss... Like, it looks like it's cross-eyed. One guy looking all over the place. My god, this thing is ugly. So it's got casemates and these other seconders. Torps are center, but very exposed. And two guns, only one turret in the front, two in the back. Jesus. And another set of casemates here. What the hell kind of abomination is this? Well, look how weird it looks from the back as well. You see how the nose goes in and then like widens? See this? You see the the, the curve on of the the hull. Everything about it looks out of shape. This has to be one of the ugliest ships I've seen in World of Warships. What the? F okay, let's take a look at the armor. Icebreaker, 60 millimeters, 305 to 250, upper belt 170, but I mean, this is a 27, 27, that's uh, overmatch by 406 and larger, so once again, uh, this thing is going to fight lower tiers, quite, lower tiers quite well, but it's going to up tier really poorly, and my god, this 5 head, this 6 head, this 50 head, holy moly, it's going to get smashed so hard, The booty, 27 as well. Deck armor is 32, interesting. So Yamato and Musashi are gonna have a field day with this thing. But then again, they smash all BBs, so that's not really that special. This turret though, my god, I feel like, holy, like how do you not break this turret? It looks, who comes up with this design? More gaming, I guess. Hmm. Suppose I, I mean based on the turret setup, obviously you want to be kiting away with this thing. That's that's what you want to be doing. You want to be kiting away, keeping your five head away from the enemy. I guess, point your forehead away from the enemy, makes sense. Okay, what the hell is this? That's a citadel, huh? Seventy millimeter. It's three o five with seventy behind it. 32mm deck across the board, 60mm deck armor, so the citadel extends across the entire ship basically. What a weird looking armor scheme. Wait, uh, can't this thing get sit through the booty pretty easily? Yeah, I think this thing doesn't have anything internal. Doesn't look like it, there's anything internal here. Actually, no, this is flat. Oh, no, no, it does, it does. This is, this is, there's a flat shape. Hmm, I wonder, I wonder if it extends down here as well. Usually it does. I thought it might be quite vulnerable to getting sit through the stern, but I think there might be internal plates that protects it from being sit through the stern. At least you're not going to be able to, like, get a plunging shell in, because this is going to block it. This plate here. What a weird looking ship. I'd like to say when angled, you're not gonna die that fast, but 
Honestly, with all the overmatchable armor and all the shell traps and the gigantic superstructure, I think this thing might be eating pretty easy damage. And the turrets look quite questionable. What a weird looking ship. Pushing in doesn't look fun either. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Pushing in at this thing. Questionable. I wonder what the f uh, like the angles and the guns are going to determine quite a bit. The angles and the guns are going to determine quite a bit. If it has good angles, it can get away. Like if it has good backward firing angles so it can kite and use all the guns, then maybe. Still, it's only six guns. It looks pretty scuffed, not gonna lie. Okay, let's see, what else do we have? Tier 9. Prince Ruprecht. Why have they started to shorten Prince as PZ? Prince Ruprecht. Year of design, 1944. A high-speed battleship project with eight 406mm guns. She embodied the development of battlecruiser projects of the World War I period. Panzer? Panzer Ruprecht? Yeah, but I think its name is Prince, according to Wargaming. Isn't it? Hmm. What was the... Okay, let's see. 28 second reload. It's Prince. Yeah, it's Prince. Prince Ruprecht. Prince Ruprecht. 63.9k health. AA looks strong, but once again, it's going to be German, so keep in mind it's probably going to be 5.2k range. Uh, and potentially some World War One AA stuff, so it's probably going to be junk. Cool, thanks a lot, Why is it so cold here? Give me a second. Suddenly, really fucking cold in here, so I'm just gonna put my hoodie on. There we go. Okay. There we go. Ah, uh, put a comfy ho hoodie on. Now we're nice and snug. All right. Let's see. 19.5 camera range. 32 knots. 32 knots. That puts us at 33.6 with speed flag that's pretty pretty okay i mean it's no longer tier 9 it's no longer really that stand out in terms of speed hmm. same 12 game torps 16.5 they hit hard but they're so slow so slow six game hydro always good Four and three, so basically you you have to spec the extra heal, extra damage comp mod on this. I feel T nine has Iva, yeah, right. This one has better torp rating. I wonder what it changes. Maybe it looks like you get an extra torpedo in the tubes or something. Let's check. Hmm. Turrets look more compact, at least. Less vo Is it just me, or do the turrets look somehow comically oversized for the hull? Like, it looks like battleship turrets on, on such a small hull. It looks like the, the scale is wrong or something. Oh, you get oh you get two sets of torps. Now, that's pretty interesting. That's a lot of torpedo power. And the... Uh, Oh man, six per side, and they hit for sixteen point five. That's some potential, really nasty YOLO, YOLO power. And they're very exposed, though. But that's a lot of torps. Fully upgraded might be four x four, yeah. Still, that's still that's still a lot of torps. The increased torp rating is the 3x4 three, three set of 4x3 being changed to 4x4. Makes sense, so you get 4 per side. That's a lot of torpedo power. That's a lot of torpedo power. They love being knocked out, they do. Hmm. Oh. 
Oh. 30 millimeters tier 9 is no longer good. 30 millimeters tier 9 is junk. That's really bad. At tier 9, when you're facing tier 10s, like, suddenly there's so many ships that don't match you. You got Republic, you got Ohio, you got Kremlin, uh, you got Thunder, you got Georgia, you got Musashi. Like, everyone is suddenly overmatching you. 30 millimeters is not good at tier 9 anymore. And then Upper Nose is 27, which is overmatched by 406s, which is basically everything except the French at this point. Hmm. That's, that's really rough. 300 to 20, 150, gee, okay. I feel like this is just gonna arm all the AP. So you have a better icebreaker on the booty. <laughs> okay, so you get a lot of torpedo YOLO power, but you struggle to actually make it in because you're unmatchable. And 300 millimeter main belt. Once again, the higher we go, the worse it becomes. Wait, the citadel right behind. It's a very, it's a very small citadel, but I'm actually pretty worried now that you can get the overmatch citadel. Oh, what the hell is this? 220? Oh yeah, it's behind there as well. Wait, is there any hidden plates? There's, I don't see any hidden plates. Someone said there's no hidden plates inside it. Someone checked it and apparently there's no hidden plates, so... That makes me worried. I mean, you're gonna need to hit the pinpoint shell, but... Um, provided you're in close range combat... That, that can absolutely happen. So this thing is gonna eat full pens going in. Full pens going in. On from many, 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 many ships. That's gonna make the YOLO a lot more difficult. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. That one gal, thank you for 22. Do they still have the hilarious thing where it looks like... Oh yeah. <laughs> you see the barbette compared to the citadel itself. How you know this is Wargaming fantasy land. It literally doesn't fit on the Citadel, the Barbette. It's literally spilling over. Oh man. Yikes. 32mm deck. 32mm deck armor as well. Hmm. So definitely gonna be HG spam pretty hard. What was the helpful on these things? On this thing? 63.9k! With a lot of overmatchability and a lot of vulnerability at tier 9. Hmm. And only 3 heals. It feels like it's gonna be smashed pretty hard. Well, well, I mean, we'll see. It remains to be seen. Maybe it will have really good gun ballistics or something. And it can play at range and it doesn't have to close the distance. But that makes, but it, that, that's, that makes it another one of those that's gonna be really counterintuitive. Because you get torps and Hydro, which is like Brawler, but then they force you to play at range because you can't survive. That's gonna be... Hmm. We'll see, we'll see what they come up with, but I feel like this might be a hard one to execute. The concealment is really good based on the block. Actually, the numbers we looked at weren't that good. The numbers were actually not that good, which was a bit worrying. So now we get Schlieffen. Year of design, 1944. A high-speed battleship that inherited numerous traits of German battlecruisers of the World War I period. Her main armament is represented by 420mm guns. 420mm guns are sadly not much of an advantage in the game these days. If it was 430, it could be quite effective. But 420 is... It's like four. 406s in terms of World of Warships. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Okay, let's go check equipment. 420s, 28 second reload, 30 second traverse. 
Now you can get this reload pretty quick. You run the reload mod, so you can cut it down a fair bit. Um, 70.6k health though. That is very squishy. That's squishier than the Borgonia. 13.5k. You gain extra range, but you don't gain any speed on the torpedoes. Not exactly optimal. Thunder laps at 22.2 seconds. Yeah, I know. Main battery range 20.1. No longer that good at tier 10, especially without the spot plane to help help you increase your range. Hmm. 34.1. 34.1 speed. Uh, that puts us at 35.8. Fast for a battleship, but still not super fast. Absolutely fast for a battleship, sure, but now you're suddenly competing with like the speed boost battleships. Which are all quite a bit faster. Still only three heals. Normal heals with eight second cooldown. Fast damage control, which is good, but four. Six cam hydro again. The horsepower is very strong, 200k. If the ship is light enough, that might make it handle like a Kremlin or something. Like a lot of a lot of power on this engine, so should mean fast acceleration. And not losing that much speed in turns. Remains to be seen. Schliefen. Yet Vermont is stuck with a car motor. <laughs> yeah. So you got a torpedo set. Four yeah, two X4 on both sides. And these hit for 16.5. A lot of torpedo power. Iowa has 212k, yeah. Weird casemate setups at, at the at the back again. Like I think these are just gonna cause a lot of shells that we're not arm to arm. They look really poor. I don't understand if it's designed supposed to be designed in 44, why do they still have these casemate secondaries? Like these these haven't been a thing since World War One. Lots of them. Lots of shell traps. Hmm. Wow. Okay, holy moly. That's a lot of icebreaker nose. Jesus. Why casemate guns bad? Because in World of Warships, it just means it the armor plating, instead of being this flat surface that can bounce AP, it's it provides shell catchers. Shells that would normally bounce are instead gonna arm on this spot, so it's not it's pretty terrible. So the icebreaker came back. So the tier 9 is basically there to force you to free XP by the looks of it. And the tier 8 kind of looks like it as well, but the tier 10 armor, holy shit, that's a lot of ice. That's actually a very small part of the nose that's overmatchable. Hundred, and now you go to three eighty on the armor belt. Holy shit! Three eighty on the waterline belt, the most important one. Three fifty, hundred and fifty. Dick is fifty millimeters as well. You got a fair bit of superstructure to farm, but vulnerable booty, but so much. It's you need to hit the exact right spot because there's so much protection on the back as well. Hmm. Turrets. Well, the issue with the turrets are they're still very, very flat. And I'm worried that this might potentially get smashed. Let's see. All or enough. Oh, the Citadel is actually quite high. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The Citadel is actually really high. The other ones were waterline. This one is quite significantly above the waterline. This is actually quite a high Citadel. You're not going to get Citadel nose in thanks to the gigantic icebreaker, but... The broadside on this thing looks very vulnerable. 80, 50. So you got 380 followed by 60. So 440 millimeters spaced armor. But mm, that's a little, fair bit of Citadel to smash. Alpha kill, thank you for the 27. <laughs> Not as high as Wargaming when they were designing this line. But yeah, you, this is not a ship you can get broadside on. So this, this is weird then, because basically if you go and brawl in this thing, 
If you're gonna brawl using your icebreaker, if you're pushing a brawl in this thing, you better hope you can torpedo them before they get your broadside. Because if they get your broadside in this thing, um, you're gonna get smashed. You're gonna get absolutely smashed if you get if they get your broadside. Because this is the easiest citadel in the world to punch through. And remember, you only have 70k health in this thing as well. So citadels are really, really gonna hurt you. You also have less heals. So this thing gets punished extremely hard if you get caught broadside. Hmm. So the risk the risk with pushing in and using your torps is quite significant on this. Quite significant. They control cruisers though, of course, but I mean it's a battleship. That's gonna be interesting. Now, you, we, you better hope that the firing the firing angles are going to decide a lot about this ship, because if the firing angles are poor, and you're forced to get broadside, this thing is going to be painful to play. So, firing angles will be a really strong decider on how the ship plays. Like, that's really going to influence the line a lot. If you can keep in, auto, in bounce angles, it's going to be quite good, because then you can keep angled at all times with a lot of good armor to use. But if you're forced to give broadside, use the guns like Grosse Kordofus right now, because German firing angles are always basically shit. Uh, if you're forced to give full broadside, then it's going to get punched hard. It's going to get punched hard. So firing angles at this point will tell the story about the Schlieffen. If the firing angles are good, and you can like angle this kind of armor against the enemy, then the ship might be quite powerful, despite the 70k health. But if you're forced to give broadside, it's going to be junk. Yeah, it's 13.5 game tribes. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna drop them off at range, aren't you? Because you can't, you don't dare to go in and brawl with this thing. Hmm. It still has the speed as well. So, maybe? It's a weird design, but I mean, if the firing angles are good, and you can zip around at your, your what was it, 35.8k, 35.8 knot speed, you can zip around and maintain your angling with 50mm deck, fast acting heels and stuff. Um... It could be good. It could be good. We'll see how situational it is. A lot of it's going to depend on the guns. Do the guns get, do the guns get World War One performance where they can't pen shit, or do they actually get good penetration? Uh, is it going to be battle cruiser dispersion with these and Sigma, or is are the guns going to suck? Are the firing angles going to be good or not? There's a lot that will can still decide how this one is going to work out. For for twenties means of course angling is much easier against them. The Sigma is 1.7 for now, but Sigma is a number they can play with easily. Sigma is one of those numbers that are very easy to play with. Hmm. We'll see, we'll see. Right, let's see. We still have one more ship to look at, boys. We still have one more ship to look at. <laughs> Incomparable. Year of design, 1915. The project of a ship that was enormous for her time. A fast, moderately armored battlecruiser armed with super powerful 508mm guns. Super powerful! They actually wrote that in the description? Oh, Jesus. Enormous. Will you review, review Napoli if it drops today? No. I have a lot of IRL stuff I need to do today, and I need to do it during business hours, hence why the title says a super short stream. Okay. 508mm guns, 28 second reload, 30 second turret first. Pretty amazing that in World War I, they managed to move those turrets uh, that quickly. Also, wait, that looks like a triple turret. I thought this thing had dual turrets. Why does it look like a triple turret? Interesting. 19.5k AP alpha. Jesus. That's a lot of... That's a lot of alpha. 70k health. Flat 70k. Torpedoes. 12 cam torps, but 62 knots. Not German 50 knots, but 62 knots. And they hit harder at 16.8 instead of German 16.5. Jesus, that's a generic turret icon? Yeah, I know, but usually it still shows the du double. 
17.6k range, which is complete junk, but we do see that it has spotter plane, but the range is junk. Propulsion, 33 knots. 33 knots. Okay, that's interesting. 33 with speed boost, with speed flight is 34.65. Normal damage con. Normal heal. Only three of them. 10% speed boost. 10% speed boost. 10% speed boost. Which means with speed flag and speed boost, this thing does 38.1 knots. Holy shit, that's fast. That is stupid. Hydra as well. <laughs> Hello? Except, wait, <laughs> how many, which gimmicks do you want? Yes, all of them, thank you. 38.1. Not 48, 38. Uh, Hydro as well. And a spotter plane. Yeah, 20% spotter plane. So you can get decent range on it if need be. Now, what's interesting about this is someone calculated the concealment on this thing. And the concealment on the ship is, I think was a 10.6 kilometers, the concealment with the full build. Which is hilariously broken, if that's the one they're going for. But someone calculated it to be 10.6. Which is literally better than uh, Des Moines, isn't it? Or was it 10.9? It was something completely absurd. It was completely absurd. It was less than 11 kilometers concealment. So it basically outspots all the cruises that it overmatches. So, very, very debatable. Holy moly. Okay, that's a huge ship. That is... That's a pretty thin ship, though. That's a pretty thin ship, but it's huge in terms of size. Trying to use, I feel like trying to use the third turret here is giving up a lot of free real estate if you want to use the third turret. Dumbo turrets? Kinda, yeah. Those are some long ass guns. Interesting. Okay, let's, let's see it boys. 25 millimeter nose, 102 icebreaker, or side, well, kind of the side, not really icebreaker. But what is this? 51, not 50, but 51. And that's so important because basically Germans, like Hindenburg, pen 50 exact. Many of the super cruisers pen 50 exact. So having 51 is just enough to troll them. It's just enough to troll them. So that means. It's okay, 51? He does Hinden pen 51? Which ones do not? So it's Hinden that pens it, but which one do not? Stalin pens 51. All of them, really? Henry. Is Henry the one that gets left out? Wait, this is only the Henry. That would be the most British thing ever, if the only the Henry can't pen. That would be the most Royal Navy thing I've ever heard. <laughs> if the French can't pen the egg armor. <laughs> Goliath will easily pen it. Venezia Sap pens 54. No, Venezia pens 54. So that thing can pen it. Then it's not then it's not that bad. So the things that get the pen can't get the pen. So it's not German level. Uh, not, uh, sorry, uh, Soviet levels. So just, just a big middle finger to the French. That's pretty hilarious, actually. Upper belt, 102, 152, okay. 32 millimeter torpedo protection, is that gonna, is that gonna lead to some bouncing bullshit? 25 booty as well. So a lot of air matchability here. Oh, 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 okay, let's see, what do we have behind here? 279 plus the 32, so 310. 51 citadel but that turtleback that turtleback does not look effective enough to actually stop maybe here it's pretty sloped on the center you see how it curves out it's pretty sloped here on the center but underneath the turrets it's way too steep though for any protection 
way too steep. I don't. I don't think even. I think even this is too steep to actually protect it effectively. I don't think you can work with that. I think you're just gonna get smashed. Yeah, two seventy nine. And then fifty one. So what was the three ten? About three sixty millimeters of of layered armor. That's not a lot. At tier ten, that's not a lot. And this citadel is way above the waterline. So this thing is gonna get dumpstered hard um, if it gives any sort of broadside. This thing is gonna get dumpstered hard. The nose does it have anything? Any protections inside the nose? Oh, no. Might be hidden plates, we don't know. But I suspect it doesn't. It's so long, yeah, it is enormous, honestly. This ship is gigantic. It is a huge ship. I'm thinking this thing is actually just gonna eat shit. From, from a lot of angles. Where are the torps located? The torp pretty far back. It's 4x set per side, and these do hit pretty hard, really hard actually. But getting to use them is going to be very difficult. Because, I mean, you remember how long this ship is. Like, you can be citadeled here already. You're trying to do a drive-by, the guy shoots you underneath here and citadels you before you can even launch your torps, because they're at the back of this gigantic ship. So I think this thing is very much going to be squishy. It looks the armor, everything about the armor screams squish. This thing is going to get smashed and it's going to get smashed. But on the other hand, the firepower is absurd. And the concealment is really, really dumb. And the speed is insane. The speed is 31. The concealment is less than 11 kilometers. And the guns are ridiculously overmatching. They overmatch everything. Like it's bet Yamato overmatch. So this is like... We're going to play like a cruiser with overmatch guns. Which is really weird. If you kite away, the torps at the back are going to have good angles, sure, but I mean... The turning circle on this thing was over a kilometer, which, considering the length of the ship, doesn't seem far-fetched at all. The concealment makes the new swift in silence shine. Two points well spent. I wonder if this is a ship that you might build it on. What a, what a weird gimmicky ship, though. What a weird, weird ship. We'll see how it plays. We'll see how it plays. Not a fan of more overmatch being added to the game, but... It can be quite quite frustrating to deal with. It's, it's, I think it's going to be quite frustrating to deal with, because you're not going to catch it in any BB. It's going to outrun you. It's going to outrun so many cruisers as well. And in the hands of a good player... It's going to outspot you, it's going to outrun you, and it's going to overmatch you. So, it just waits until you fight someone else, and then suddenly you, you start eating 508mm AP shells. Then you turn your guns to try to shoot him, and then he just kites away and goes dark. Like, hey, this thing is, might be really frustrating, actually, to deal with. Really frustrating to deal with. Interesting. We shall see. How's the AA rating? We can't see. But considering, you gotta remember, basically, all the best AA ships in World of Warships have been released in basically the last year. If a ship has good AA, it's because it's been released recently. If the ship is old, it doesn't have good AA. That's the way World of Warships kind of works these days. So it wouldn't surprise me if the thing has really good AA. It was like 600 plus mid-range, that doesn't surprise me. That really doesn't surprise me. So, th that was... That was the upcoming ships. Dude, can this dryer shut up? Holy shit. Connecticut is here as well. We looked at it. It's basically a Vermont. It's a Vermont um, in every possible way. Oh, you get death, death charge airstrike, sure. But it's a Vermont in every possible way, except what they did was they changed the armor on this plate here. They changed the armor on this plate here from 32 to 150. That, that was what they changed. Or was it 50 to 150? Something like that. That's literally the only change they made. It was 38 to 150. That's what they changed. So apparently they think that's enough to make it a brawler. Um, <laughs> it still does 
uh, it's still a Vermont, it still only does uh, 30, 23 knots. It doesn't have Hydro, uh, it doesn't have Speed Boost. It... Yeah, um, I wish them the best of luck with that project. That's going to be interesting for sure. Oh yeah, and they changed the guns. Faster muzzle velocity, but lighter and lower damage. But the reload is still poor and the turret reverse is still what it is, so... Yeah, I don't... <laughs> yeah, I don't... <laughs> I don't know what they're hoping to achieve with that thing about. That's that's their brawling, that's their brawling uh, Vermont. A design of a powerful seven seventy thousand ton battleship. What a speed that was armed for the main battery. Yeah. So and don't they're not really the highest hopes for that that friend over there. Let's see. Do we have anything else? Schoenberg we looked at. Incomparable we looked at. We looked at all the other new ones, all the upcoming ones. Yeah, nothing else new. No, we looked at all Groningen. Groningen is just... Uh, Groningen is Friesland. Dutch version of Friesland. Looks good for sure. Good looking ship, no doubt. But this is just the Dutch, Dutch Friesland. Dutch version of Dutch ship, yes. <laughs> Oops. Dutch version of Dutch ship, yep. Yeah. 